there are different types of stem cells. Um, there are, first of all, the human embryonic stem cells. You hear a lot about them in political discussions and there are a lot of ethical um, discussions about it. There are then adult stem cells that you can find in the human body. They differentiate into certain tissue types, not all of the ones that human embryonic stem cells would differentiate them. And then there's a new type of stem cells. They're called induced pluripotent stem cells or also for short IPS cells. And they have been derived in the laboratory by inducing certain factors into those cells. And what happens then is these skin cells, for example, can be turned into stem cells or we can rejuvenate them into stem cells. Um, they are then also pluripotent, so they can differentiate into any cell type of the human body. And they also divide technically indefinitely in the culture dish. These stem cells were first described by a group in Japan, um, the Yamanaka group in 2007. But to date also, um, other laboratories all over the world have um, used this technique to model um, specific diseases in the culture dish. So here at the Parkinson Institute, my lab is working on the iPS cells that I just described. And um, these iPS cells are derived from patients with Parkinson's disease. So we start with a skin biopsy in the clinical center, and then we are expanding those skin cells and bank them. After the expansion of the skin cells, we introduce factors that can rejuvenate those cells. And then at the end, we have um, stem cell or iPS colonies in a culture dish. Over the last three years, we have derived over 60 lines from patients with the disease and we have different subgroups. So we have one group that is carrying genetic mutations in PD genes. We have a second group in which we have collected samples from patients with sporadic forms of disease, so we don't know what underlying genetic cause they are. And we have a third group which comprises of healthy controls. And it's very important to include controls because we want to see the differences between the patient and the controls to really understand disease mechanisms. We are very, very fortunate to have so many patients at our clinical center that would like to participate in research. And it's also very important to, um, to move forward into translational science so that we are able to find new therapies and ultimately hopefully a cure for PD. It's also very important to work with other academic centers and industry on, on this important um, issue because these cells can not only be used to discuss or, or understand disease mechanisms but they can also be used for drug screening. Um, future is maybe at some point to use also those cells for cell replacement therapies. My laboratory is differentiating those iPS cells into dopamine producing neurons to model the human condition in a brain. So what we want to do is we want to create the substantia nigra, which is a tiny area in the brain stem, and want to create those neurons that are dying in the brains of Parkinson's patients. We are now able to generate those dopaminergic neurons and can detect differences between um, the genetic forms of PD and healthy controls. What we're also doing with a different technology is to correct those mutations. So what we're doing is we're using little molecular scissors which can cut the DNA and then we have an extra piece that um, contains the correct piece of DNA and we can introduce that into those cells. So then technically we can cure Parkinson's in a culture dish which also gets us really closer, hopefully, to, um, to cure the disease. I think the research that we are doing here at the Parkinson's Institute can give patients with Parkinson's disease hope. They're not alone. We are fighting the disease together. We're trying to find together new therapies, new ways for a better life for patients with PD. That's the most important thing that I think we can do at the Institute and also moving, moving forward, moving the needle forward to um, better therapies.
My lab works on the protein kinase LARC2, and the gene that encodes LARC2 is the most frequently identified genetic mutation that causes Parkinson's disease. This means that you can inherit a mutation from one of your parents, and that can give you Parkinson's disease. One of the goals of our lab is to understand how these mutations cause the onset of disease and how we may be able to exploit those findings to develop new therapeutics to prevent the onset or slow the progression of Parkinson's. Our lab uses many models to ask questions about how these genetic mutations cause disease. But we believe that one of the best ways to test our hypotheses are to use model systems that more closely resemble the disease state. And we do that by using patient-derived stem cells. And we do this in collaboration with our colleague here at the Institute, Berger Schule. And one of the things that we do is use these disease systems in a dish so that we can more appropriately model disease and maybe get closer to a therapy that will prevent the onset or slow the progression of disease.